us for ROG's fast-paced and passionate product development. You drive us to push the limits of every feature and enhance the gaming experience in the best possible way. It is you that triggers ever new and exciting innovations. Your voice and your input feeds this intelligent evolution of ROG. Come on stage, ASUS Corporate Vice President and General Manager of Worldwide Sales Open Platform Business Group, Jackie Hsu. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is our big honor to have you all joining our press event tonight at Gamescom. First of all, let me de deliver our appreciation for your coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> this year is our 30th anniversary. In fact, this year is also a very tough and challenging year in our PC industry. Why I say that is because, number one, some countries are having trade war. That causes a big problem. Secondly, because of the component shortage from some up upstream vendors, that also causes a big issue. Luckily, ASUS still maintain relatively stable business status. Especially today, our topic is gaming, so especially our gaming products. You all know, ASUS already occupy the biggest market share on multiple business. But you probably don't believe we still grow our quantity on gaming products not only on revenue, but also on quality. Is it, is it incredible? Yes or no? Yes. yes, okay, definitely. Why we can maintain this great result? Inside ASUS, we believe if we want to have the outstanding business result, there are three very important criteria. The first one is the outstanding product. Without it, nobody can help us. That is our own responsibility. Secondly, the outstanding teamwork. Today, we don't believe there is one superhero. He or she can do anything, everything, establishing the good business result. We rely on a team, a big team, and with good teamwork. The third criteria is partners. Without outstanding partners, we cannot make the result happen. ASUS never ever sell the product to end user directly. So basically, we need to have great channel partners helping us to deliver the goods to our target users. Besides, we also need all of you as our partners delivering the information to our target audiences. That's why today we luckily have stable business. I really want to thank you 
all to support us having this stable result. Thank you, you again. Thank you. As I mentioned in the beginning, because of the tough challenge in this industry this year, some customers like to ask me one question. They say, Jackie, Asus maintain stable business. How can we do the same thing? Do you think the answer is very difficult or the answer is very easy? Trust me, my answer to them is very easy. If we want to have the same stable business like Asus, please, selling more Asus product, then you can have the same stable business. Does that make sense? Yes, Asus maintains stable, so you sell more Asus, you maintain stable. Yes. But they ask me the second question. Jackie, Asus have so many products. Which one should we focus more? Let me refine my answer a little bit. You should sell every single product line Asus has that you maintain the stable business as Asus. Yes, we know, we know, we know. But Asus really have too many products. To be honest, the answer is very simple. Gaming product. Today, everybody can understand the importance and the potential from gaming product. But probably you didn't know. You didn't know? 14 years ago, when Asus first started to develop gaming product, at that time, we were very lonely. In that industry, in the industry at that time, most of people believed PC should be for generic usage. One PC can fulfill all the demands, no matter you are working or you are playing. But Asus had different thoughts. We realized enthusiasts, gamers, need something different. First of all, they need the latest technology. They need the best performance. A lot of time, they also want to have the greatest capability of overclocking. That's why Asus started to invest a lot of resources on developing the gaming products. This is one of the first batch of our ROG motherboards. After that, Asus saw the success. That is the reason, recently, more and more competitors are following. But no matter what, our ROG has built the success. After what, we started to develop more and more product lines. Not only the original motherboard, but VGA, laptop, desktop, and almost all the product lines ASUS have today all have something under ROG. You know, sometimes some customers also ask me one, one question. They said, Jackie, Asus ROG become the greatest gaming brand. Why Asus don't want to put more products under ROG? Believe or not, with ROG brand versus without ROG brand, we can double the sales quantity. Can you do this for us? As a businessman, yes, I like to produce more products under ROG. But, but, to keep the spirit of ROG, we cannot just do that way. Today, every single product under ROG, we definitely need to keep the original spirit to fulfill those gamers' demand. It sounds very special, but to be honest, I cannot speak too much in public. Otherwise, our competitors will know the secret of ASUS' success. But one thing I can share with you roughly is listen. Yes, the answer is listen. What does that mean? In terms of the product, product development cycle, like this chart, no matter the original stage of prototype or 
R&D developing or even the mass production stage, we always like to listen to the community, to the enthusiasts, and also to the tech medias. We need to understand what they need, and we try to build and fulfill what they want. This is not a very, this is not an easy job. Trust me, because a lot of time they need far beyond the existing technology. They need far beyond the existing readiness. Some technology is not ready yet, but we keep in mind, trying to discuss with our vendor. Then, probably when some time is ready, we deliver the solution to them. Anyways, the entire cycle is quite special. Later on, we will have so many. Oh, we have two uh, product experts introducing the latest products to all of you. Including monitor, motherboard, mouse, and gaming headsets. But no matter what, as I mentioned in the beginning, Asus cannot make the successful business result alone. We do need the entire formula. Remember, the first one is product, second one is teamwork, third one is partnership. We are committed in investing more resources. On developing the great gaming products for the communities, but we also need all of you continuously give us the best support. In that way, we do believe we can deliver the best solutions for the gaming for the gaming、uh, users in the near future. Then we can make everything better than today. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you. Please welcome on stage General Manager of Gaming Gear and Accessory Business Unit, Chris Huang. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Huang, and it's good to see you in Gamescom. We started to expand the peripheral business since last year, and I guess you probably can feel that. So not only keyboard, mouse. Has said we have more good products, but also we started to enter the new categories like gaming chair, webcam, apparels, and even backpacks. We have more selections nowadays. And don't forget the amazing accessories that comes with the ROG phone. And this shows we have the ambition to evolve the ROG brand, not just representing a good gaming component, good gaming system. But also a good gaming peripheral brand, and a very stylish brand. Several years ago, the popular game genre is quite limited. So if you look at the big tournament on the market, you probably will only see CS:GO, League of Legends, Dota 2, and even World of Warcraft and StarCraft is declining. And some gamers told me. We don't need too much, too many control, too many buttons on the mouse. All things can be done through keyboard, so mouse make it as simple as possible. But until PUBG came out, a new genre, battle royale, defined, and also Fortnite is a very, very popular game. And we're so busy in Fortnite. It's not just a shooting game. You also need to do a lot of construction, building the shelter. So there's a lot more action controls can be done in the game. And these are quite usual in-game scenario. So in in PUBG, normally you won't just walk straight forward or straight left, right? Sometimes you want to walk diagonally, and at the same time, if you also can tilt your body, and that would be very very helpful. But think about it. When you walk diagonally, which means you have to press W and A or W and D, right? And the lean control normally set as Q and E. So how do you do that in one hand? It's very difficult, right? 
And the other scenario is in uh, GTA 5. It's an open world action adventure game. So it can, you can navigate the world on foot or on vehicles. And some gamers, they even prepared keyboard mouse and the gamepad to tackle different scenario. So when piloting the airplane, it became a flight simulation game. So it's really hard to control through keyboard and mouse. So we want to resolve the situation. So we came up this. The ROG Chakram. The Chakram naming it came from the ancient round throwing weapon. And I don't mean you can throw the mouse to the enemy when you are defeated in the game. Don't do that. It's because the thumb joystick is in the wrong shape, and it can do full analog control. And since we're from the DIY industry, so we want to make it full of customization and very interesting with the DIY spirit. And it will position at the top range of our portfolio, so all the digital specs is top notch. And the joystick is programmable, and it has two different modes the analog mode and digital mode. Analog mode means it has a 360 degree direction full control, and the resolution on the X and Y axis is from 0 to 255, which means it has 256 steps. So it can handle all kinds of flight simulation game. So in GTA 5, you no longer to switch the keyboard, mouse, and the gamepad during the game. And I also try it in the Street Fighter. It's a lot of fun. You should give it a try. And the digital mode means you have four more buttons on the mouse. But it's more intuitive than four separate buttons, because your thumb is parking on it. So when you move to a certain direction, it will only trigger one action. Not like four separate buttons. You might misclick or double click. So when you are in the uh, PUBG, so right now you can walk diagonally. You press W and A. And at the same time, you move your thumb joystick up or down to tilt your body right or left at the same time. Very easy, very intuitive. And since we're from the DIY industry, right? So we know gamers have different tastes and different palm size, OK? So don't be too excited about the size. We offer you two, kind, two types of the thumbsticks, th thumb the longer one and the shorter one. So if you really don't want to use it, all right, you can cover it. We have a cover. And you can carry the mouse around everywhere, so you can store the dongle inside the mouse. So the top cover can be removed without tool. It's using magnetically attached. And we also give you a blank badge, although I don't recommend you to do so. But if you really want to customize your own logo, you can put it on and light it up. And my team gave me a poker face to represent my style. I don't know why. And the two keys buttons is also magnetically attached. So remove it, then you can change the click switch. So we keep improving the design. If you remember in our first generation Gladius mouse, you need to peel off the mouse feet, then using screwdriver to remove the top cover. Then you are able to change the click switch. So we keep evolution on the small details. And it's the flagship mouse. So the digital spec is 16,000 DPI and 1,000 hertz polling rate on 2.4G and wired connection. And it has a triple mode connection, so wired, 2.4G, and Bluetooth. And two mode power charging, so wire charging and wireless Qi charging. And you have been asking, where is our wireless Qi charging mouse for the Botius Qi mouse pad? So here it is. And with the wired charging, ca cable fast charging. So 15 minutes charging, you can enjoy 12 hours. And from the full charging, 
you can use 100 hours under 2.4G connection. So it's an awesome gaming experience with the mouse. OK, let's move on. So beyond the PC gaming growth, the mobile gaming market, including the Nintendo Switch, grow even faster. So look at this. The Nintendo Switch from 2017 is only 1.5 million. 2019 is 34.7 million. And also, the mobile gaming revenue grow very, very fast. But when we look at the existing product on the mobile gaming market, we found there's definitely something we can contribute. And here, I'd like to talk about the headset. As you know, recently, we have a quite completed gaming headset lineup. We have a Theta 7.1, Theta Electro, Delta, and all the way to the Tough Gaming H357. And they're great for PC gamer, but maybe they are not the best one for the mobile gaming. So in our opinion, a good gaming headset on the go, it should be easy to carry. It should be lightweight and true gaming grade wireless. So Bluetooth is not a good choice. But so far, we cannot see such kind of combination on the market yet. And even we don't have the solution on the existing product. So we want to resolve this. This is our idea. Our g Strix Go 2.4. It's the world's first USB Type-C wireless gaming headset for smartphone and Nintendo Switch. And the dongle is using Type-C interface, so you can just plug and play on your mobile device. And it's very, very lightweight, and it's affordable, so you can put it in the carry bag, and you are ready to go. And we feature the AI microphone, which we firstly used on Theta 7.1, and it's about, launch, about to launch. And the microphone performance is very, very good. So if you want to be a streamer, and this might also be a good choice for you. And the USB-C 2.4G dongle, and Nintendo Switch, it has a Type-C interface. And most smartphone has Type-C, including our G phone. But of course, you can use it on your laptop or PC. I also have one RG Zephyrus laptop. It comes with three USB Type-A and one Type-C. And I can tell you, most of the time, my Type-C is available. So you don't need to share the USB port with other device, the keyboard, mouse, and the flash drive. And it's very, very lightweight among all the wireless gaming headsets. And here, of course, I mean the name brand. So without the boom mic, it's 290 grand. And with the boom mic, it's 300 grand. It's still the lightest one. And it's affordable, and we give you a carry bag. So you can put it in the carry bag, very compact size, and we give you a lot of uh, cables, accessories that you can handle all kinds of the connection. And we paired the 40 millimeters ASUS Essence driver and the airtight chamber design. And we passed the high res audio certification. So standard Bluetooth headset cannot pass such certification. And the sound quality is just beautiful. The clarity and the bass is well balanced. And our audio signature defined is between our Delta and Fusion. And AI microphone. And we use the AI algorithm instead of the traditional frequency band cutoff technology. So the AI uh, microphone performance have, has been approved by TeamSpeak and Discord. And here, I'd like to share with you three demo clips. The first two are recorded from our competitor's headset. And the last one is from ours. The environment is exactly the same. We record it in our cafeteria. And there's a lot of people talking in the background and recording while keyboard typing. So let's hear the difference. The first one is from the K company, H brand. Hi, here's a test recording for the headset microphone. Hear the difference in quality between the ROG Strix Go 2.4 and other gaming headsets. It's not bad, but you still can hear the keystrokes, right? 
And the second one is from the R company. Hi, here's a test recording for the headset microphone. You can hear the difference in quality between the ROG Strix Go 2.4 and other gaming headsets. You can hear the crystal clear keystroke. <laughs> I almost forgot what we're, re we're recording about. But I can tell you the keystrokes, keyboard typing is really hard to filter if you're using the traditional way. And the last one is ours. Hi, here's a test recording for the headset microphone. Hear the difference in quality between the ROG Strix Go 2.4 and other gaming headsets. It's, it's a little bit too good to be true, right? So it's exactly the same environment I can, I can be assured with you. So I highly recommend when you get the sample, you test your own and let us know the result. And the battery life is also very impressive. And since it's Type-C interface, so the charging current is bigger. So with the 50 minutes charging, you can use three hours. And this beats all the wireless gaming headset on the market right now, the charging efficiency. And from the full charge, you can use 25 hours for the battery life. And this is the ideal gaming headset on the go we want to deliver to you. And that's all my presentation today. And thank you very much for your listening. Please welcome on stage Technical Marketing Manager, Stephen Funky. Hey guys. Very nice to see all of your beautiful faces here today. So my name's Steven, and today I'm gonna to take you through two product categories. The first is gonna be displays, so we'll look at some of our gaming monitors, and next we'll have some brand new motherboards to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started with the displays. Now, the very first ROG gaming monitor was the PG27, see it right over here? And you know, when we launched this display and, and throughout the years, we've really made sure to cover the mainstream size, which is 27 to 32 inches. But what we've also been working really hard towards recently is growing our, expanding our lineup to include really big displays. So at the very top, we have our PG65, 65 inch display. And then over here on the bottom, we have a 17 inch portable gaming display. I'll talk a little bit more about both of those monitors in a few moments. But first, um, I want to address one of the pain points we have across all of these different uh, display sizes, which is customers now, they want 4K and they want it at fast refresh rates. And that's really hard to do. We're currently already hitting the bandwidth limitation of DisplayPort 1.4. So how can we address this? Well, there's a couple solutions already in the market today. The first is chroma subsampling. This is something we use, okay? And we think it's okay in certain situations. So if you're watching a movie, for example, chroma subsampling is fine. You probably won't notice the, the bit of color data that we've um, pulled out of that, of that data stream. But if you're playing a game that has a lot of HUD, right, it has a lot of user interface elements, you know, in, in front of the action, it's not gonna look great. And if you're just using Windows, so you're reading something on the internet or you know, going through a, a Word document, for example, it's really not gonna be the best experience that you'd expect from a premium display. So not a perfect solution. The other thing that we've seen on the market is you can actually just use two DisplayPort 1.4 cables and plug them both in, two into the graphics card, two into the display. Uh, this is not really fun to set up uh, in, in terms of the drivers. And you also lose the ability to have HDR, and you also lose the ability to have variable refresh rate technologies. So G-Sync and FreeSync, both of them are out the window. Not a great solution if you want a premium experience with your display. Fortunately, what we have today from our friends at VESA is a brand new technology called Display Stream Compression. And this has been in gestation for a long time. You guys may already be a little familiar with the technology but we're bringing two new monitors with this tech here today. So I wanna make sure you guys um, understand the technology. So basically the way it works, you just take a modern graphics card, all the modern uh, latest cards from Nvidia and AMD support DSC, 
And you need to have a monitor that is, is capable, DSC capable. The display stream gets compressed over on the side of the graphics card. And when it gets over to the monitor, it basically unzips the, the file or the stream. And it decompresses it. And with this technology, it's really great. We just need a single cable. We have full 444, so no chroma subsampling. We have HDR, works fine. VRR works fine. G-Sync and FreeSync, everything's OK. So what's the drawback, right? There's always a drawback. There's always a catch. Well, in this case, the catch is that there's about 0 0.1 milliseconds of latency. Fortunately, this is completely imperceptible to human beings. So the downside of DSC is, is basically not a downside, which means this technology is the perfect stopgap while we wait for DisplayPort 2.0. And who knows when that will arrive, maybe at least a year away from today. So we're really happy with this new tech, and we're bringing it to market today in two new displays. So this is the first one. This is the ROG Strix XG43UQ, 43-inch display. Now, I, I had a lot of fun coming up with this nice tagline here. We are positioning this monitor as a TV replacement. This is something we're really excited about. 43 inch, you'll get that awesome 4K, true 4K 144 hertz experience. It's a VA panel with DSC, so it's going to be real, real good for that 4K gaming. Uh, we also have FreeSync 2 HDR, okay? So you get your variable refresh rate. 90% uh, of the DCI P3 color gamut is covered. This is really nice for a big display like this. It's going to blow a lot of TVs out of the water. Display HDR 1000. Okay, so we've really pulled out the stops with this large display. And as I mentioned, this is a TV replacement. So we're also shipping it with a remote control. No need to get off the couch. You can uh, select your inputs and change all the settings from your convenient position. Really an exciting product. Now, not everyone is in the market for a 43-inch display. Okay, you, you, you don't need a lot of space to set something like that up. So we're also bringing a 27-inch monitor with DSC to the market as well. And this is for our mainstream gamers who want to get that 4K experience, and they know they're going to benefit from 144 hertz refresh rate in the future. So this display is for them. So we have the specs. This is an IPS display here, so you're going to get that really good color. Personally, I'm really excited to have something like this on my desk. We will have adaptive sync. Um, we haven't um, you know, gone through the full certification process, but you guys know what to expect from us there. And we don't have display HDR 1000, so it won't be you know, the amazing HDR experience that the 43-inch has to offer, but you will get compatibility with HDR content with the display HDR 400 certification. All right, now, next up, I want to revisit the monitor that I just mentioned, our portable gaming monitor. This is the XG17, the Strix monitor. And we've already released this. We've already showed it to you guys before. But we held a little secret back, OK? And this, it's, it's not that crazy, OK? It's not like a rocket science kind of thing. But we have this really cool stand. We call it ROG Tripod. And we've developed it just for this portable gaming monitor. And we think it's going to actually make a huge difference for the way the customer uses the product. That's why we're talking about it. So, We'll have a brief video today, and then I'll explain our thinking, our design thinking behind this new accessory. So that's the ROG Strix XG17 with the brand new ROG tripod. It, it's a tripod, guys. It's just a tripod. But if you really, if you go online right now and you look up, you know, you type into your search, you know, portable gaming display, 
No one's doing this. What, where do they expect you to put your gaming display? If you're pairing this with a, a laptop, are you really going to put your gaming display next to your laptop? So what's the point? So you're going to use the keyboard over here, and then your mouse is going to, no, your mouse is going to be over here. So the other, your portable display is going to be over here, and your mouse is going to be way over there, and you're going to be using the keyboard over here and looking over here to game? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what those other companies are thinking. So when we were designing this product, we very quickly realized this didn't make any sense ergonomically. And the tripod just completely solves this problem very easily. I, I guess everyone will probably copy this in a few months, but uh, we're really happy to be the first ones to come up with this ingenious solution. So this is how we expect the, um, the product to be used. And as a tripod, and you know, this is a portable device, so we need to make sure the design is portable. So we've gone with a metal chassis. Uh, we don't have the weight and stuff to announce to you guys today, but you know, it'll be lightweight and very durable. We have to balance those two things. And the legs fold up really nicely. You can just throw it in your backpack and take it wherever you need to go. Now, this display goes up to 240 hertz, okay? So yes, you can drive that experience with our ROG laptops that we have on the market today, but you probably can't get that with a gaming phone and you definitely can't get that with modern consoles. So why are we showing these other two scenarios here? Well, the reason is because you guys saw the first slide. We're growing our display lineup right now. So this is not the only portable gaming display we plan to bring to the market. We have a lot more that, of course, I can't talk to you about in detail today, we, but we have a lot more coming. So we will in the future have monitors, portable gaming displays that are tailor-made for these kinds of gaming scenarios. That's what you can look forward to from us. Now these are the specs in case you forgot, uh, the video was going a bit too fast for you with all that you know, sword play. 17.3 um, inch IPS display with a three millisecond response time. That's pretty quick for an IPS display. Adaptive sync, the range, again, this is insane, from 48 all the way up to 240 hertz. This is a really premium display. It's not a kind of a cheap second display for your monitor. This is, this is the one that you'll be gaming on. Three hours of battery life at 240 hertz. So if you want to extend that, you could you know, clock it down to 100 or 60 hertz. Um, but three hours of battery life, pretty decent. We also have micro HDMI and USB Type-C I.O. So again, if you want to plug in a console or a phone, you'll be able to do that as well. And finally, along with the tripod, we're shipping with a smart case. So if you, if you really can't handle the tripod or it's not going to fit in your bag, um, you can bring it with a smart case, super slim, just fits over the front of the device. And you can use that to position it in both portrait and landscape mode. So pretty nice to have both options there. Now, I told you guys I would talk about this a little bit later, our PG65. You guys already know the specs. I don't need to remind you. But the really exciting thing, what I'm very happy to be able to say today, is that it has shipped, OK? It's already out. It's already on the way. In a couple weeks, you will be able to buy this in stores, all right? On shelves September 2019. Really happy to see this one finally making it out the door. All right, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about motherboards. Now, as you guys saw in the beginning of the presentation from Jackie, the motherboards have been a big part of our story over the years um, when we've been building all this, all this ROG ecosystem. And, you know, we started back in 2006 and in 2007. And with those early motherboards, one of our design pillars or goals was to make overclocking and tweaking more accessible. And that's something we've revisited again and again and again as we've developed motherboards. So I have a few milestones I'd like to talk about today um, that are good examples of how we've done that. So the first is in 2011, we had the Maximus 4 Extreme. This was the very first graphic EFI. That was a long time ago. I don't know if you guys remember that. But you know, this was a big leap forward because before you had to be pretty techy to get into the BIOS. It wasn't a very user-friendly experience. We did a little bit of that with our early boards, making things more accessible. But having a graphical EFI really made things look more comfortable and really helped open up our motherboards to more and more customers. It's a big step for us. And then in 2014, with boards like the Z87, we launched something very, very interesting, which is, was, was called four-way optimization. It's now called five-way optimization. 
This is some really powerful software. It's so powerful, we're still using it today. If you look at our modern boards, all, all the major platforms that we support, uh, we use five-way optimization to this day. And it has a few different functions, but one of the key features, the one that I want to focus on, is the auto overclocking. And basically what this allows you to do is it just mimics what a real human overclocker would do through a lot of technical knowledge as well as time and effort. And it just takes you through that automatically, which is phenomenal. I mean, before that, the performance that you would get from overclocking was just locked behind you know, all this knowledge and all this time. You had, to, you had to know all these things. You had to spend all this time. It was really, really a big hurdle. And we pretty much removed that with four-way optimization and now five-way optimization. So that was really, really cool. And that was a software tool. Now, what happened in 2018 is we were kind of looking around the industry, thinking about, you know, what's going to be next on my chart in the future. And we noticed the big trends of the day were AI to artificial intelligence and, you know, things like big data analysis. And so we were thinking to ourselves, okay, how can we use like, you know, algorithms and artificial intelligence and big data sets? How can we use those in our motherboard? Okay, what can we do? And that's what led us to develop this huge firmware update. And we brought this first to the market with uh, the ROG Maximus 9, excuse me, 11. And when we brought this to the market, it was a really big step forward. This was called AIOC, or AI overclocking. And what this feature allows you to do is actually, it looks at your specific components that are inside your system. It doesn't just say, oh, you have you know, this type of CPU. It looks at how good that CPU can be, how good your cooling solution can be. This is the kind of things it's, it's looking at and analyzing. It even looks at the workloads that you're running. What it does is it, in real time, can adjust the voltages and the clock speeds to make sure your system remains stable. And that's a really powerful feature. Now, this isn't something you're going to see us bring to every single board, OK? We had it here on the Z390 platform. It's not something you're going to always see on every chipset. The reason is because it takes a ton of effort we have to do a lot of back-end profiling to make this work, to make it happen. So it's not something we'll always, we'll always have. But when we do have it, it totally changes the game. And I'll show you a, a very specific example of that a bit later on in the presentation. But now I want to show you guys the two new motherboards, right? That's what you're here for. So let's take a look at what we have today. Now, this board over here on the right side, this is the brand new Rampage 6 Extreme Encore. Now, the reason we have three boards on this slide is because it's the third generation in this X299 HEDT platform. Now, normally we only have time to do two. We don't usually have time to do three. We're not usually afforded that luxury. But this time around, we have these new CPUs, we have more lanes, and we've gotten the chance to do a third generation. So we've taken the opportunity to take the awesome features from this board, the original, and we've added the cool power solution from the Omega, boosted it up a little bit, and we fused those together into this new motherboard. So yeah, OK, that's the high-level story. Sounds great, Steve. So what's, what's the meat? OK, what do you really have to tell me about today? Well, let's start off with the power solution. OK, we all love the performance. Now, the power solution for this board is using 16 of the latest power stages. These are 70 amp power stages. They're really powerful. And we've gone with a teamed power design this time. And the reason we're using a teamed power stage design is because when we have CPUs with really high core counts, transient response becomes something that's very important. We need that to work really, really well. If we use a traditional power design with uh, something like phase doublers, uh, the problem is that when the CPUs change, change loads, we need to spike the voltage up to keep the system stable. And that's something we really want to avoid. So we've gone with the team power stages in this case. It's going to be much better for the CPUs you'll be running in this motherboard. Another thing we've done is, you, you guys know we're ROG, we love thermal design. So 
we've spent a lot of time optimizing the thermal design. We took the lessons from the first board and some of the good features from the second board, the Omega, and we put them together here. Now, if you're someone who buys a motherboard like this, if you're the customer, when you get this board, it's not something you're going to just throw in a, you know, a sleeper rig, put under your desk, and forget about. It is, it is not that kind of customer who's going to pick this board up. This is the kind of uh, person who's going to you know, do a custom hard loop build. Okay, that's what we expect. And so when we design this, we want to make sure that that person, when they go to the extreme to delid their CPU and overclock everything, we want to make sure the motherboard can handle it without requiring them to go through extra steps. We don't want them to have to you know, mount a specific fan just to cool the south bridge. We don't want them to have to add you know, active cooling on their extra M.2 cards. That's something we want to avoid. And so we keep that in mind when we design all of these thermal components. So starting up here at the top, we have the VRM heatsink. And this is actively cooled with two delta fans. These aren't the delta fans that you know, eat your fingers and make a ton of noise. We specifically chose these models because they're very durable and very quiet. And by the way, these fans won't even ramp up until the VRM hits 60 degrees, and we weren't seeing that happen in many gaming loads. So the system should be whisper quiet most of the time. This solution, by the way, this heat sink, can handle 650 watts of CPU power consumption. That is a lot. So even if you're really pushing the top-end Intel CPU to the extreme limits, you should have absolutely no problem doing that on this board. It's going to be really great for that type of customer. Now, we've made a lot of other improvements as well. So the cover on those Delta fans is aluminum, and the IO shield is also made from aluminum. So we put metal all over this board. We also have a solid steel backplate to protect the back of the motherboard and also protect your fingers when you're installing the thing. Now, at the bottom, the south end of the board, we have two plates that connect into one, essentially one heat sink. One part is covering the south bridge here, and the other part is covering two M.2 slots. So definitely, it's going to utilize the normal front-to-back airflow in that case. So again, this is tying back to where we don't want the, the user of this device to have to install extra fans or extra cooling for those components. It should be completely fine just using the normal airflow in the, ca in the chassis. Excuse me. Now, we've also done a lot of improvements in terms of connectivity. This is something we always need to keep updating gen on gen. And so in this board, we have the latest uh, Intel Wi-Fi 6 solution, AX200. Now, we make routers. I don't know, sometimes you know, people forget, but we make really good gaming routers. So if you're going for a wireless experience, you get this motherboard, you get an ROG router. I'll share a little bit more detail about that later, about how those two are going to synergize together. But just want to remind you that this is something we really care a lot about. We also have a 10G port. So if you want to plug in and you have a really nice internet from your ISP, you'll be able to utilize all of that. In addition, we have the latest USB. So USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, two two, twice the bandwidth of the previous generation. So if you love having those really high bandwidth storage, you can definitely take advantage of that as well. We also have um, some really good front panel connectors with high-speed storage there as well, USB 3.2 Gen 2. So again, if you want high-speed storage access in the front and the back of the chassis, you'll be able to do that. And finally, we have Quad M.2. Now, on the last slide, I showed you guys we had the heat sink, right, covering the two M.2 slots. So what about the other two M.2s? Are they just, you know, floating in the wind, no, no protection? No, we've done something special for these guys. We have this DIM slot, okay? It's a DIM slot riser card, and you plug both of those M.2 cards into this, and again, it's in a perfect position to leverage the natural airflow going through the chassis. And we've got fat metal heat sinks on both sides to keep both of those M.2 cards nice and cool. Okay, so that was the Encore. We also have a brand new Strix. Now, like the Encore, this is also the third generation. Okay, this is the third Strix we've had for X299. We've got a lot of great features. Uh, a lot of these are also on the Encore. So we have VROC. 
We have active VRM cooling. This is a 140 millimeter fan, which is a little bit different from what we had on the Encore. We have AIOC, just like we had on the Encore. The Wi-Fi 6, same Intel chip there. We have 2.5G and 1G Ethernet ports. We have an OLED display this time on the Strix for the first time ever. I'll talk about that a bit more on the next slide. We also have Gen 2 addressable header. Now, this is really nice for customization. When we talk about a Strix product, we really want to focus a lot on user customization. That's what we try to enable. Now, the Gen 2 header is really cool. With the Gen 1 header, you had access to addressable RGB strips. You could control um, the, the patterns, right? But now, with Gen 2, it can actually count each LED, each RGB LED. And so that means you can control the width of that effect which is really cool. If you guys have ever set up like an RGB room, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is really critical to having fine-grained control over that aesthetic uh, scenario. So really cool feature to have just built into the motherboard there. Another thing we have is flex key. And this allows you to essentially remap the reset button on your chassis, which means no one uses that anyway, right? So now what you can do is actually customize that button to be a useful function. So Personally, I really like this. I think that's a great option to have. So I never use the reset key anyway. Now, these are the three key features I just want to highlight um, before we, we move on. And the first is the VRM cooling solution up here. Now, I told you guys the Encore could handle 650 watts CPU power consumption, right? This one can handle about 550 watts of CPU power consumption. The heatsink can handle that, which is still a lot. If you do the math, even if you're overclocking the top CPU right now from Intel, you should be more than fine. So unless you're looking to really push the whole platform, every part of the platform, the storage and the, the Ethernet and the CPU, if you're looking to push all those to the max, you go with the Encore. All right? It's very clear. But if you just want a solid performer and some features oriented at customization, you go with the Strix. You won't be disappointed. Now, another thing you'll notice down here at the bottom, we have two M.2 heat sinks. We love our M.2 heat sinks. And in the middle of the board is what I just mentioned to you guys, the OLED display. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this twice is because it's a really exciting moment for us. It's a good example of our trickle-down um, theory. This is one of the big reasons why we have our ROG products. If we can invest the research and development in these you know, really high-end premium gaming products, then we can bring them down into our more mainstream hardware, like this Strix motherboard. And it suddenly becomes viable. And that's how uh, we can generate this cool technology and bring it down to everyone. So this is a great example of how we've done that with the OLED display. Now, finally, I've highlighted the IO shield over here. Now, you guys probably know this better than anyone, but in the market today, there are two, two groups of gamers. Some who love RGB and some who really, really, really hate RGB. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you guys have your own opinions on that as well. So what we're doing, I, I promise, we are trying as hard as we can to accommodate both groups at once. It's really, really not easy. So this is just one example of how we do that. We've used a, a double layer acrylic panel here in the IO shield. And when you turn on the RGB, you get this flashy cyber text, all right? But if you don't love the flashy cyber text, you can turn off the RGB and it becomes this flat gray color right underneath the ROG logo. It looks really sleek, really clean. So we think we've done a decent job on this motherboard of catering to both of those audiences. It's something that we continue to improve generation on generation. Now, I've just talked to you a lot about hardware, but we can't forget about what we've done for software as well. It's a big part of the gaming experience. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this. There are like 100 features just in uh, game-first networking, but I'll give you a couple examples of features I think are really cool evolutions. So with game-first networking, this is a really big point about how we synergize between our different product categories. And so today, if you buy an ROG router and you buy an ROG motherboard or ROG notebook or ROG desktop or any number of devices, it will work seamlessly 
with that router. The router knows, like, hey, this guy is playing a game, and it prioritizes that network traffic. It's called packet prioritization. This is a really great feature. You know, we have more and more smart devices and wired, wireless devices, connected devices in the home today. And so being able to prioritize and control your traffic is more important than ever. So I think that's really great. We also have been doing some new things with our Sonic Studio software. And what we can now accomplish today is we allow the customer to control the inputs and outputs as different audio sources. So let me give you an example. If I'm uploading my stream, maybe through OBS or NVIDIA Shadowplay, I can take the input from my microphone and the audio input from my game and combine them into one source. And that can be really convenient when you're live streaming. You may not need to manage like five or 10 audio channels. You can condense that in the software very easily now. So really cool uh, feature, especially if you're doing any streaming. Now, I told you guys I would come back to AI overclocking. We've done a little bit new this year, but before I get into that, I want to talk about specifically how it works to make sure you guys can understand. So over here, you can see a good example of how the backend system looks at cooling specifically. It looks at a lot of things, as I mentioned. But when it looks at cooling specifically, it will assign what's essentially a score. You can think of it as points. So if you're running a small air cooler, maybe you'll get somewhere around 120 points. But if you're on a custom water loop, you might be scoring like 160, 165 points. The system accounts for all of that information, including the other things I mentioned earlier, like ambient temperature, what kind of workload you're doing. And it uses the algorithm to look at all the available information and all the sensor data and tell you the best overclock for your system. Now, compared to something like five-way optimization, this is super fast. It does it almost instantaneously. It takes a minute or two. And it's also, as I mentioned before, it can work in real time. It can just adjust while you change your workloads, while you're using the PC. It's all baked into the firmware. It's very cool. Now, this is an example over here on your right about what the prediction might look like. So if you guys are at all technical, you may notice uh, what some of these mean. These are giving you, it's a guideline essentially, it's giving you a hint. If you wanna run a very specific workload on your PC or fine tune it for a specific you know, two core threaded or multi-threaded workload, you'll be able to get the suggestion from this, quickly dial it in manually and you're off to the races with your very niche setup. If you just want you know, automatic, make my system perform really well, of course, you can just do that as well. Very easy. OK, so I promise you guys something new that we've done with AIOC. And here it is. So for the first time, we're able to do per core overclocking automatically. Now, this wasn't so important when we had like quad core CPUs. You, know? you just take five extra minutes and you know, play around a little bit. You can find the overclock. But when you're looking at something like an 18-core CPU or a 16-core CPU, going through and benchmarking every single core is an insane task. That's days and days of work. And now it can be done almost instantaneously. And as always with AIOC, if you want to go in and manually change the voltage or the clock speed for each core, you can just click through and do that. It's a few clicks. So, if, you, if you're totally new to overclocking, but you're gonna plan, you plan on getting one of these high-end Intel CPUs, you'll be able to easily get the most out of, that, out of that chip. But let's say you're a veteran overclocker. This is just gonna save you a ton of time. So it's really a great feature for everyone. Now, before I go, I just wanna remind you guys about how far we've come. Back in 2006 and 2007, we were adding features into the BIOS. We were just opening access, okay? We were just like, Here's, here are the features. Let's see what you can do. And now, today, in 2019, we're at the point where we can just click a button and the machine automatically overclocks every core on an 18-core CPU. This is just such an incredible leap forward. It's been an amazing journey. And I'm really happy that you guys have been there all along the way 
to get there with us. Very exciting times. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoy GamesCon. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And I hope we will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Please welcome back on stage our today's presenter, ASUS Corporate Vice President, Jackie Hsu, General Manager of Gaming Gear and Accessory Business Unit, Chris Huang, Technical Marketing Manager, Stephen Funky. Thank you all for joining us today. Our product demo area will be open now.